Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in this tutorial, we will be learning about the installation and configuration of Kali Linux and uh, we'll also learn about what actually ethical hacking is and why is it actually called as ethical and what are the different types of attacks that can be done and what how we could do to prevent it. So before I proceed, because uh, that would be a long conversation, so before I proceed with that, let's just go ahead and start something in the background that would be useful to us since that would take a very long time and what I'm talking about right now is installation of Kali Linux. So we, one thing you need to keep in mind is that I can also go ahead and install this directly on my operating system but that is not what I would do uh, since uh, the, I assume that you are just a beginner uh, with the Linux. Uh, I won't ask you to go and install the whole operating system on your PC or your laptop. The reason being that if you don't know what you are doing and if you just try to play with it then unnecessarily uh, you will be in a lot of trouble. That is the reason you don't know how the system works for example let's say I have been working on a Windows machine since let's say around past uh, 7 or 8 years maybe and since I'm working uh, since past 7 or 8 years I know how exactly it works. Uh, let's say for example I know why there are system files over here and uh, what each and every system file mean uh, like say I can go into Windows system uh, 32 file and I know that if I delete either of the programs what will ha happen so these are the driver store for my drivers and group policy users so I know what is what exactly but if you're a new person if you're just a noob and if you're trying to go ahead and try to run the Kali Linux on your whole PC the first thing that might happen is that it may not get installed because maybe sometimes uh, your laptops are not bootable not dual bootable and not really not dual bootable but uh, there are some specifications set by Microsoft nowadays which are crackable but by the time you listen to this video I don't know if something else comes in so then you might not be able to dual boot or be able to single boot Kali Linux. The reason being that there is something uh, that is UEFI set by the Microsoft which only allows you to install the Microsoft uh, Windows 8 or any newer version 8.1 or similar versions. So that is the reason why I won't be asking you until unless you are uh, an expert in uh, dual booting or installing systems until unless you are not a system administrator don't go ahead and mess with this because it can uh, actually go ahead and create a hell lot of problems for you that's the reason. So that's the reason I would be asking you to go ahead and run it on your VMware workstation. I have the workstation 9 there is I have not yet updated it. There are workstation 10 and 11 I believe and the workstation uh, is uh, you can say you need to go ahead and buy the workstation but if you want something similar to that you can use VirtualBox. If you don't want to unnecessarily go ahead and spend your money you can go ahead and download the VirtualBox which I'll just go ahead and show it to you and you can go over here. This is the VirtualBox and uh, in case just you don't know what VirtualBox is and what Kali Linux is. Kali Linux is based on Debian and it is an operating system which has lots of loads and loads of penetration testing tools. Okay, I'll just let me, before I proceed, let me check if my system is working perfectly. Okay. Perfect, advance, proceed. Save. So, now it should work I believe. Okay, perfect. So we are here the virtual box. So you can see that virtual box runs on Windows, Linux, Macintosh, Solaris, Host and um, a lot of other operating systems and I assume that you are installing it under your Windows so that's the reason I asked you a virtual box. If you're running it under Macintosh then you can surely go ahead and use the VMware player uh, which is also VMware is also as good as virtual box but I, I support VMware but the only thing is that you need to go ahead and spend your money if you're trying to buy a workstation. If it's just a player just a single machine then you can straight away go ahead and use the player. Okay, so uh, if you want to download, you can go ahead and check the downloads option over here and you have it for different versions of Windows for 64 as well as 32 bit versions and as of my in my system I have an 8 GB RAM so that's the reason I would be going ahead and using the 64 bit version so you can go ahead and download it everything from here and besides you also need to go and install the VMware tools or VirtualBox tools whatever they have inside them. I am not much uh, in concern with VirtualBox because I hardly use it or I don't even use it sometimes. The most thing which I use is the, virtu uh, is the VMware. So I'll just go ahead and close and just in case you can also go ahead and download the VMware. I'll go ahead and show it to you. And yes, 
So this is VMware. It's just a virtualization platform uh, that goes ahead and converts your RP. That means you can go ahead and run a computer inside a computer, an operating system inside an operating system. So what I would do is that let's say if I have a 6 or 8 GB RAM in my laptop or computer then I can just go and run this and assign uh, 2 GB of its memory to my Linux or, or either of the operating systems. And uh, the best part of uh, Cal Linux is that it even runs in as less as 512 MB RAM. That's its best part. But I suggest that you should not run it in a 512 MB RAM. The reason being that uh, if you're trying to go ahead and crack passwords or password hashes using that it will be quite difficult for you because it requires a graphic card and a good processor to go ahead and run that. So since you are just learning Kali Linux and these are the basics for that, I'm going only going to teach you how to install and do the basic stuff over there so that uh, once you are completely sure that you know what you're doing and the basic Linux commands and what kernels are and how to hack into them, only then I'll suggest you to go ahead and install the whole operating system so that you can go ahead and mess with anything you want and you'll still be knowing what you're doing. So to come back, I'll just go ahead and show you over here. You can go to downloads version. We have vSphere over here, uh, but we would be needing the VMware. So you can go ahead and check over here. These are for okay so okay here it is vmware player perfect so i'll just go ahead and open that so this are these are the two versions one for uh, microsoft windows and one for linux and it, these are 64 bit versions if you want you can go uh, back and check and you will find uh, the uh, normal means 32 bit versions as well and these are compatible so you have the drivers and tools for them and open source just in case you are using linux and you might be wondering that if you are using macintosh then what can you do so if you are using macintosh then you can go ahead and download the vmware fusion and i'll just go ahead and open this and okay sorry this was the vmware fusion perfect and just in case you want to buy you can also go ahead and buy the workstation workstation is far more better uh, than the vmware the uh, normal vmware the reason being that workstation goes ahead and uh, you can go ahead and connect two virtual machines at one time only so that's far better but you can do the same thing in virtual box and uh, without spending any kind of money so but i support vmware because it, it has an extended support that's the reason so yes you can go ahead and download these over here these are for mac and these are for the windows so yes you can go ahead and download them so once you have downloaded virtual uh, vmware you can just go ahead and click next 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 and it's uh, quite easy you don't actually have to do anything just go ahead and click double click on the installer file and once you're installed you will see this vmware workstation if you are uh, using uh, let's say virtual box then i won't be able to help you but there is quite a suitable topic uh, i can show you if you don't know how to install it uh, how to install virtual box perfect you can see over here there are images and just to be precise if you don't know how to install a virtual box i don't even think that you should be learning this tutorial the reason being that installing these programs are much easier than going ahead and learning this so once you have installed these things there are specific uh, uh, uh you can say as ways as to how they have given how you can go and install that so once you have installed i assume that you have uh, the VMware after that we need to go ahead and download the Kali Linux and uh, so I'll just go ahead and download the Kali Linux and I'll just go ahead and open it over here and just to be clear that once you're using Kali Linux uh, there may be a lot of bugs because uh, previously this was known as backtrack when it started and after on they later got converted they stopped uh, at 5 backtrack 5 and they started uh, distributing Kali Linux because it's um, much better than the backtrack version as this is based on Debian and you can see over here that this Kali Linux even works on uh, cell phones such as Nexus 5, Nexus 6 or even the previous versions as you can see Kali Linux NetHunter on these devices and uh, you can also install it on your Raspberry Pi, Oldroid, Qbox and a lot of other things. So in uh, these are the penetration and testing uh, tutorials. You can also go ahead and search them in case you don't understand this. And to download the Cal Linux, you can go over here. These are the SA1 sum file. Just go ahead and check them if you're unable to go and download a proper file. And these are the proper versions of downloading. Uh, mini means you just have to go ahead and again install everything once you have downloaded this file. And as of me, I would be using the 32-bit version of Cal Linux since I am going to install it in a VMware. 
and um, you can go ahead and download these over here there are torrent options as well as iso and once you go ahead and download them these are the latest version 1.1.0a the same version which i would be using uh just let me check before i okay perfect uh 1.1.0 and that's what i would be using perfect and uh, once uh, I have downloaded that, we would need one more thing. Uh, since uh, I assume that you have at least 4GB of RAM to run this because yeah, either you have 4GB of RAM or you should install the whole of Cal Linux under your operating system if you have 2GB or RAM or less. But the reason I'm saying that is because we are going to run a total of 3 operating systems. That is the main host, that means this whole operating system. Inside that we are going to run Cal Linux over here and we are also going to run Windows 7 because we are going the windows 7 will be our target machine and cal linux will be our um, will be our main uh, machine attacking attackers machine which through which we would be going ahead and attacking the uh, windows 7 and uh, the windows 7 version which i would be using right now it would be the one we would be the first one and i won't be using the service pack when activated uh, means uh, service pack one the reason being that uh, you can say it as let's say it is uh, you can also go ahead and install service pack one the re only reason i'm using is because i don't have it and i would just recommend that you don't go ahead and uh, start the defender if you have it it's not a problem but i would suggest turning off the defender since i assume that you are just a noob who is going to learn through these tutorials and the different if you're using a defender a windows defender on if you're keeping that on then it, there might be a different way to go ahead and let's say uh, penetrate that uh, particular operating system so that's the reason i'm not going to teach you how to go ahead and uh, bypass the windows defender so yes so when you have all of these three things after that we can go ahead and start with the installation and configuration of our operating systems